right so let's see the the, the job scheduler that we've seen and i think we've scheduled it for every two minutes isn't it so for every two minutes the activity is executed and you'd be able to see or trace that on the admin studio yes so multiple times a day for every two minutes we have defined this activity to be executed okay? so the advantage of job scheduler is you don't need to invoke it from anywhere right it's it's like your main method you don't need any external invocation for it so according to the schedule you have given the system will look after uh, scheduling or invoking the activity as per the schedule okay? for example here if you observe the one that is selected is background processing right but i can also run my scheduler on other nodes just like multiple threads understand the nodes as different threads okay if you have a large volume of data to be processed it is better i i distribute the load onto different nodes now for example i have two other nodes here now this is associated with three different nodes okay now when my job scheduler is run it will be running on all these three nodes parallelly if you choose this option called all associated nodes okay otherwise if you just choose one this will be a th single thread which means either of these three the system will be deciding it on run time and either of these three nodes will be running this schedule which is a single thread right but if you do it on all associated nodes it becomes a multi thread process so just that it it speeds up the uh, process because you are running uh, multiple things in parallel it will speed up the process a bit and it will also distribute the load evenly across the different nodes so completely part of the node uh, uh, management aspect so again all of this is taken care by the system in the runtime directory i will not say that first three records should be you know processed in the background processing node next 10 records on the real time node so i i will not be able to decide that we have one more rule type which looks after the background processing it's called the queue processor okay so i think queue processor by the name itself we can understand where it queues certain things and they would be processed okay. those certain things could be uh, records i mean they could be data instances they could be email instances or whatever but the items are queued and they are processed one by one let's see let us create a queue processor So let us create. Even for this queue processor, also I don't have any applies to class. It is applied for the rule set, and the activity is where uh, you know most of the logic is in. yeah so yes this is how your queue processor looks like okay but again i have the enable disable option and the first thing that i see is how would you want your node or queue processor to be associated with okay so you can choose and here if you observe i can only choose one 
you know, I, I don't have an option to choose multiple node types. I can only choose one. But earlier, when when you look at the scheduler, I, I can have it across multiple nodes, right? But here, I can only associate my queue processor with one one either one of the nodes. Okay, so multiple um, node is not possible on the queue processor. Right. So, which is like I, I don't have a multi-thread process. When it's a queue, so all the items will, will go in one single node. When do you want this to be processed? There are two different options here. There's immediate, as in whenever your queue processor is executed, would you uh, want the activity to be executed immediately or would you want a delayed uh, processing? And here, number of threads per node. So within each node, how many threads are you looking at? The earlier scenario where job scheduler is there, it is applied on different nodes. It can be applied on different nodes. But here, there's only one node. But within that one node, are you looking at any other threads? Are you looking at a multi-thread within a single node? If yes, we can choose this. And we can put it to two, three, four, five. And the system suggests that go with one. So one after the other. Because when you mention it is a queue, right? So probably a batch of thousand records have to be processed. So it's better we, we go in a queued order, right? one after the other. So then the core, you are processing activity. So where is it? Somewhere on XYZ class. And is this disabled? Okay, I'll just disable this. Okay, no, my schedule is now disabled. Hmm. So my queue processor is enabled and with this activity. Now, when I say queue processor, there are a lot of records to be processed. So there is a chance that errors might come up, right? Or probably there could be some failures. Then what should I do? So here comes your option. Okay. So what is the, how many times, if, if a record fails, if of all the records, one record fails the execution. So should I retry it or not? If yes, how many times? So your maximum attempts for retry is set to three. But I can change it. I can put it to two or four. How many times the system will try to process the same record if it fails? Then, by how much time should it wait before retrying it? Okay. So initial delay is one minute. So probably the first time you, I mean, the system processed the record, it failed. It will wait for a minute. And then it will do it again, right? Because you have given the attempt as three. Yes. And there's something called as delay factor, which is generally, you know, multiplied with your uh, initial delay. And uh, that gap is considered as the total uh, delay time for your retry. So if you look at this, let me click on this. Yes. So this is used to calculate the time period are you able to see this yeah calculate the period between the retry attempts by how much time should i retry it okay so initially it takes one minute after that the retry time is two minutes after that it is four minutes likewise depending upon the delay factor it becomes twice okay and we can have it to three four this is more like a uh, geometric progression so how much time should i wait in between the retries and all this is is part of your error handling what if some error comes up how would i handle it how many times am i retrying it and at what intervals am i trying it so this is all part of your uh, error handling yes 
and just like a scheduler i i have an alert if my queue processor is running for more than a certain time then i i would like to raise an alert and this goes in your alert log oh, let's see this but i have two options here one is immediate one is delayed okay let, let me put it to immediate first like the job scheduler this uh, queue processor will not run by itself instead i should invoke it how can i invoke it either uh, through the case type you can do it or you can also you know in the activity you have a method So you have a method called queue for processing. So this is where you can call your queue processor. Okay. So this is one uh, launch point for the queue processor. All right. So I think let me just uh, show you this. or you can also do it from okay I, i'll just remove it because it's like calling an a, a queue processor inside an activity and again calling that in a queue processor i think that seems confusing let me just remove it here and we look it in the case okay Okay. On the case life cycle, I'll be able to add a method. Sorry, in fact, a shape, not a method. So here I have a method. I have a shape. Okay, so you see a shape called run and background, right? So this method, so this shape is what you will be using for invoking your. So run and background is what we'll use for invoking the queue process. Right. So here we'll configure. So either you can configure your queue processor here, where if you observe directly, it is asking you the activity name, or let me just save it. The system saving.
Está loading. Let me just save it once again. Uh, probably the first thing we should check is the execution status, right? Because for every run, you see the last run, you will see the execution status, right? It, if it is successful, which means the, the execution is successful, the one that we are tracing is for the next run, that the upcoming run that is there, no? that is being traced. We are low quick log of login. Okay. Let's see if the changes we have done are they even reflected here? Yeah, okay. Yes, here is your run in background and uh, like I was telling, right? So you can schedule it. I mean, I mean you can invoke your uh, activity. For example, if you see, when you give it standard, so the system is directly asking you the activity, right? I mean, which activity would you would you like to run in the background? Okay? Where you decide what uh, activity it is and uh, then you can give in the access group or for example if you see this and one one more thing here you observe is along with the activity you can also give a log for for that specific instance because when you're processing the records 
acquiring a lock on it is really important right so what what is your locking mechanism are you having it on the primary page or you have having a key defined on the property or none so each of it for example if you see this yeah yeah so able to see this right so when it's a primary page you are letting the system have the pz ins key to lock your instance whereas if you are defining it on a specific property so using that key you can lock it and when it is none you are not having any locking mechanism so none is mostly used when you have just one person uh, or you know there's there's only one person to work on the particular batch processing there are no other parallel operators working on it or no other ways in which your data is manipulated so then you can go for none otherwise the ideal one is going to be a pz dynamic key right so the system will will look after uh, the each instance uniquely and it will lock it so then do you need any access group in in order to work on this particular uh, activity right because maybe the person who is uh, uh, working on the notifications or on the batch processing maybe the person who is queuing the uh, entries could be of an other application or could be of a other uh, alternate access group right so if that is the scenario then you can give an alternate access group here this is the other one which you did not give it on the activity sorry on on the queue processor on the queue processor we we have defined this right i mean we have defined the class and all of it but in case if you need uh, a specific access group for it then you can mention it on the access group okay. so if the type is a queue i mean if the type is a standard type of a queue you are directly giving in the activity but let's see what if it is <clears throat> dedicated what would you <laughs> what would you have is the queue process okay just that you are telling the system to either directly call the activity or call the activity through a queue process both are one and the same but just that here we have few other additional options on the queue processor directly like relating to your error handling or alerts uh, nodes so all of that is taken care on the queue processor for example let us add my queue processor and i'm going to save and run this now we called i mean we we created an activity we called that in a queue processor right we created the queue processor we called that on the case so invocation is important when it comes to queue processor but for job scheduler you don't need to invoke it let's see whether my queue processor is is it enabled yes it is enabled and uh, so probably after this my job scheduler would run mm, so yes it should have already okay, let's check but how do i know if it's executed or not so we should go back to our studio our admin studio again so here is your queue processor
So here you will be able to see the Q processor and node type. If you see, it could be either one. I mean, only one node type is possible. And you can see, is there any broken thread? Then is anything processed in the last one hour? What is the state? You are disabled if you are running. Mm. Let's see. It's my Q processor. Does it have any? Yes, it has been. It has, I think it just got one run the last time. Let's see. In fact, you can open the Q processor here as well. Yes, so you would be able to see. You can also trace it. You can, in fact, remove your uh, Q processor. You can defer, I mean, which is like disabling, sort of. And if you want to look at Want to look at the status? Where is it on page two? Yeah. So it is currently running. If you would like to stop it, you can. Currently, there are no broken processes. And in fact, you can trace this as well. Okay. If you see it, there's an option called trace. So here, if you observe, it says it is tracing. So it's still tracing. And what did it even trace? So generally, what do we give for uh, the Q processor is as a bulk set of records, right? But here we we just have a log message on on the tracer currently. So let us just see if that even that is being displayed or not. Okay. So it's you see. It says broken. Why is it broken? Let us see. You can, in fact, see. You you see the option, right? It says uh, remove, or you can uh, requeue this item onto the processor once again. So currently it is broken, but you have an option to requeue it. Why is it broken? 
because my my activity does not hold any you know a list of instances or anything it's just a log message that it is there but q processors would expect that you you give it a bulk set of records or something of that sort so maybe let us just have a look at this Okay. Yeah. So here is your option called View Data Flow, where you can see how many records were processed, how much time it took for processing the records, what is the progress of it. You will be able to see those details. Once I click on it, you can see the status. So the data flow in my cube processor is in progress. The average processing time, the start time, the duration. Then you can see how many records were there, how many were successful, how many failed. And you can see the run details. So the system, even though it is just on one node, I've got 20 partitions created for my queue processor. So this is the node that is part of your background processing. These are your run details. What is the failure? Uh, when a data flow node fails. Okay. So check the events. Um, hasn't what happened on your uh, queue processor? So you see what, what has happened throughout the uh, queue processor on the node for background processing is this. So the thread started, the partitions have changed, the thread picked up the partitions, the thread has created, the status changed. So all these events have occurred. I mean, we, we don't need to go into much detailing here, but just to understand what, what events have occurred during this. So we can see all those details here. And in fact, you can also see Okay, let me just show you this. One moment. Okay, so we we have seen like some threads were created and uh, you know, uh, some partitions were created. So you see like around 20 partitions were created here, right? It, it is being displayed, isn't it? Like, uh, so where is it? Yeah, around like 20 partitions were being created. So where did we see that? Yeah, here. Yeah. So on one node, 20 partitions were created, right? So these partitions are related to your Kafka data. Now, for example, if you look at your uh, Pega installation folder, suppose if you look at it, you can see Tomcat and inside which there is a folder called Kafka data. If your Q processor is successful, you will be able to see folders inside this Kafka data regarding your queue processor. Right? So there would be around 20 uh, records, 20 folders for your queue processor. Yes. So you see my queue processor, there are folders corresponding to the queue processors, around 20 records starting from the index of zero. Yes. 
you see all of this is split into 20 partitions by default and i mean if if required we'll be able to change it to you know more or less on the C, uh, dss and all but i mean that is a little bit out of scope but otherwise we can see <clears throat> the uh, q processor has divided itself into 20 different partitions so that uh, i i would be able to you know uh, process the threads in a parallel way like I, I can have my threads running in parallel. Yes. In each of these, I can have a thread running in parallel. So overall, you can have 20 records being processed parallelly. When the whole agenda is, you, you will be able to uh, run multiple records or you'll be able to process multiple records using your queue processor. So even though it says queue, so we, we are handling it as a multi-thread only. I, I have like 20 threads here, which is processing my records. You can see all the details in here is in the status, uh, how many records were processed. And again, the whole logic lies in your activity. No? So your activity has to have the list of details or it could be a list of email accounts. It could have an Excel sheet as an input or anything. Just that the more records you have, the queue processor will be able to you know, work on those records or that, that kind of a data. Yes. And like I said, you can in fact call it through an activity also. There's a method called queue processing. So all that we have done in run in background can be done in queue processor also. Queue processing, where is it? Yeah. So here I'll be able to, you know, just like standard or dedicated. So the same uh, options you see here on the run in background. So the same can be handled from the activity also. So through an activity, uh, rest all these details. How would you have a lock on it? Then what is your activity name? Right. So you can invoke your queue processor through an activity or through directly from the case type. Yes. Okay. Almost all the options that we have, yes, we, it would be available in, in both through the activity and through the case type. Here we have options to, uh, you know, as in when it should be invoked. And in fact, you, you can have it as a delayed one also. Okay, maybe you can see it here once. Let's, should it be immediately invoked or are you looking for a delay even for invoking the queue processor? Look at it. Is there a, um, probably this is not that clear. Okay. But here you, you can in fact give it a delay as well. Probably it, it would be taken care at a later time. Just like both are similar to or both are associated with your standard and dedicated. If you give it standard, you will just see the activity name, which is directly invoked. If it is dedicated, you can call the queue processor and that would in turn call your activity. So I think uh, we are left with integrations. We look at services and connectors. We look at simulation. Simulation is kind of a simple one only. And we have key data pages. And we have DB updates. I think both of them, we can take it up in one single session. Then we have reports. And we have a few other miscellaneous uh, topics like your um, accessibility features, mashup. So those are like, comparatively very simple ones. The major ones are these integrations and bit on the data pages, DB updates, and then reports.